So for those of you who have never sailed on ships that carry timber, but now you are going for your oral examination or written examination, here are some of my notes on carriage of timber cargo on ships. So you may make uh, notes from the contents of this video, uh, but again my advice is that you must consult the latest version of the timber code uh, for any kind of changes that may occur between the time that you take down these notes and go for your timber should be taken to mean any sawn wood or lumber cans logs poles pulp wood and all other types of timber in loose or packaged forms the term does not include wood pulp or similar cargo timber deck cargo means a cargo of timber carried on an uncovered part of a superstructure deck or freeboard the term does not include again wood pulp or similar cargo timber lashings include all lashings and securing components which possess a baking strength of not less than 133 kilonewtons timber load line is a special load line assigned to ships complying with certain conditions relating to their construction set out by the international convention on load lines and used when the cargo complies with the storage and securing conditions of the wood pulp and similar substances are not included in the term timber terminology as stated before and as far as deck cargo regulations are concerned the air dried chemical variety must be kept dry as once it is allowed to get wet it will start to swell up this action could cause serious damage to the ship structure and the compartment in which it is carried. To this end, all ventilators and air pipes should be closed off to restrict any ingress of water or entering of water in the compartment in which the air dried chemical of timber is loaded. The timber is loaded in various forms with differing weights and methods being employed. For example, packaged timber is generally handled with rope slings as I'll show you in a picture later on, while the heavier logs, depending on size, are slung with wire snotters or chain slings. Then there are types known as battens. Battens are basically sawn timber more than 10 cm thick and approximately 15 to 18 cm wide, usually shipped in standardized bundles and may be pre-slung for ease of handling for especially loading and discharging using either the ship's crane or the shore crane. Then there are boards which are sawn timber boards of less than 5 cm thickness but may be of any width. Then we have a cord which is a timber of with a volume of 128 feet or 3.624 steers. I'll tell you what steers are later on. Deals are sawn timber of not less than 5 cm thickness and up to about 25 cm in width. A standard deal is a single piece of timber measuring length, breadth and width of 1.83, 0.08 and 0.28 meters. Fathom as a timber measure. Here the fathom is a timber measure. You can also have fathoms in terms of depth measurement, but here fathom is as a timber measure equals to 216 feet. Logs are large and heavy pieces of timber, hewn or sawn, may also be referred to as bulks. They are stored above and below decks and individual logs may need to be considered as heavy lift cargo for the safe working load of the cargo handling gear being used. So this is especially important if you guys are loading timber using your ship's own gear or ship's own crane. In that case, it is important that you make a note of these that the logs then become heavy lift cargo, the lifting of which can actually list a ship. All right. Pit props are short straight lengths of timber stripped of bark and used for shoring up the ceilings of mines. They are shipped in variety of sizes. Then we have stack which is a measure of timber equal to half a fathom as described before. That is equal to 108 feet. Then there is a metric unit of timber that I discussed earlier that is known as a stair and is equal to 1 meter cube or 35.314 feet. Timber is generally shipped as logs, pit props or sawn packaged timber. The high stowage factor of timber generally indicates that a ship whose holds are full 
with the forestry products will not be down to our mark. So it will look that the ship is full of the cargo and the ship may be loaded heavily because of the high stowage factor, although it may not have reached its load line for that zone. For this reason, an additional heavy cargo like iron ore or bulk ore is often loaded alongside the timber cargo. Or the more common method is to split the timber cargo to positions both below and above decks. So they are loaded both below and above decks. However, where timber forms part of the deck loading, some thought has to be given to route planning to provide a good weather. By good weather, we mean a route free of rain if possible. So prudent selection of a correct route could avoid prevailing bad weather and unnecessary concerns with the cargo absorbing high sea water. As the cargo starts to absorb high sea water, what happens? The cargo starts to become heavier. The overall center, center of gravity of the ship gets affected and again the overall GM also gets affected with a reduced positive stability. So all the complications are linked. Now you have to start thinking like that as you start preparing for examinations. All right, so what happens if the cargo on the deck start to become heavier? What happens if the cargo below deck start to have become heavier? How does the center of gravity shift, overall center of gravity of the vessel shifts? All right. Now, regulations for the storage of timber emphasizes that timber deck cargos should be compactly stored, should be stored tightly and secured by a series of overall lashings of adequate strength. Where uprights are envisaged as part of the securing these uprights, which are vertical stanchions, should not be more than three meters apart. The maximum height of the timber stored above the uppermost deck must not exceed one third of the ship's breadth when the vessel is navigating inside a seasonal winter zone. I'll show you some of the examples of the lashings that are used in timber deck cargo very soon. So additional regulations apply if and when timber load lines are being used. That is when the vessel is being loaded beyond the appropriate normal marks. These regulations take account of timber being stored solidly in wells at least to the height of the forecastle deck. If there is no superstructure on your ship at the after end of the vessel, the timber must be stored to at least the height of the forecastle deck. This tow must extend to at least the after end of the aftmost hatchway. A further consideration is that securing lashings should not be less than 19 mm close link chain or flexible wire rope of equal strength. These lashings shall be independent of each other and spaced not more than 3 meters apart. Such lashings will be fitted with slip hooks and stretching screws that must be accessible at all times. Make a note that wire rope lashings must be fitted with a short length of long link chain to permit the length to be adjusted as well as regulate. Here is an example of securing lashings. You may again pause the video here for some time and draw these lashings. So even if you draw these lashings and write a little bit about the lashing, uh, remember some of the spacing, especially of the uprights, that should be good enough, right? No, hopefully no one will expect you to remember each and every tiny detail. But if you can draw these lashings and mention something about the spacing of the lashings, that we are asked about lashings. However, let's go on and talk about lashing points. So the lashings over timber cargoes are secured to eye plates attached to the shear streak or deck stringer plate at intervals not exceeding more than three meters apart. So if you have been sailing on cargo ships, you should be able to imagine what a deck stringer plate looks like. Those are those are plates which are strong plates, one of the most strongest points of the ship, and they are used for lashing. They have holes in it through which you can pass the lashings. And uh, they are very strong plates, uh, not easily damaged or, or under stress. The end securing point to be not more than 2 meter from a superstructure bulkhead. But if there is no bulkhead, then the eye plates and lashings are to be provided at 0.6 meters and 1.5 meter from the ends of the timber deck stowage position. If the timber is in lengths of less than 3.6 meters, the spacing of the lashings are to be reduced. Access to parts of the vessels fore and aft must be possible and when a capacity deck cargo is carried, a walkway over the cargo is generally constructed. So if you don't know what capacity deck cargo means, if its cargo is loaded to the full on the deck, but still a walkway should be provided. You cannot have a ship sailing without the walkway if a full capacity 
Here is an example shown where lashings over timber deck cargo store is shown and uh, you can see the positions of the aft deck walkway and the forward deck walkway is shown the spacing is shown so my advice to you would be even if you can draw a diagram uh, like this this should be good enough for you to pass in the exam and then talk a little bit about it because if you have not sailed on timber deck cargo or timber vessels or ships carrying timber deck cargo it might be a bit uh, challenging for you to answer questions in the exam because it's difficult for you to envision it but drawing like this will be helpful for you to get some marks. Here is an example of a walkway construction. So this walkway is constructed sometimes over the timber deck cargo, especially if it is loaded to the full. So this allows the monitoring of lashings and carrying out any main, uh, tightening of lashings for the crew to walk on. The code of safe practice for ships carrying timber deck cargoes or what is known as the timber code provides the general guidelines for the under deck storage of logs when it is loaded under the deck in the hatches. Prior to loading logs below decks, the compartment should be clean and hold bilges and lighting tested. A pre-store loading plan should be prepared considering the length of the compartment and the various lengths of the logs to be loaded. Otherwise, if you are trying to load logs which are longer than the compartment length, you can understand that there will be damage to the compartment or the cargo hold. And that is something that you don't want. Recommendations are that logs should be stored in the fore and aft direction in a compact manner. When loading, they should not be in a swinging motion and any swing should be stopped prior to loading into the hatch. Like I said before, because these logs are so heavy, they can cause heavy damage if the vessel is not uh, controlled the swinging of the log. The heaviest log start should be loaded first because why? Can you tell me why? Think about it from a stability point of view. All right, the heaviest logs go down. So the center of gravity also shifts in that direction. The heaviest logs should be loaded first and extreme pyramiding should be avoided. So loading the logs in a pyramid shape should be avoided as much as possible. I have a couple of drawings, diagrams or pictures here to show you how the package timber is being loaded on a ship. We talked about the package timber in the initial part of the video. Pack timber will usually be banded and may be pre-slung. Right? Packages may not have standard dimensions and may have different lengths within the package, making compact storage very difficult. Uneven packages should not be loaded on deck and are preferred to be loaded below deck. Where deck storage is made, the packages should be stored in the fore and aft lengthwise position. Again, here is a picture of showing the storage and working of timber cargos. This is under deck storage being shown. If void spaces exist at the fore and aft ends of the log stores, these may be filled with a thwart ship stored logs as I showed you in the picture before. That was I think a thwart ship stored logs. Logs are loaded in between hatch combing areas should be stored as compact as possible to maximum capacity of the combing space. Logs are heavy and oscillations can expect to cause ship damage. Personal, I advise to maintain a careful watch during the loading and discharging periods.